welcome back. Godot 4.0 is finally in alpha, and I'm so excited for what is here and what's to come. Strap in because bugs are guaranteed. As is tradition, the Godot alphas are not feature complete nor stable. Only the beta version will mark a feature freeze. It still has a way to go, but Godot 4.0 has been in development for two years already, and the Vulkan render a rewrite for even longer than that. Godot 4.0 has been almost a complete rewrite from the 3.0 version. Many, if not all, of the core systems have been improved and refactored to make them more reliable, more maintainable, and more performant. With the Godot 4.0, the team was looking ahead into the future. They wanted to make it easy to add features to the engine without having to rewrite older systems, and without accidentally creating logical regressions. Let's start with something everyone has strong opinions on. Graphics. Godot 4 will have a ton of new features that should make cool visuals and graphics possible. Obviously, one of the most hyped features coming to Godot 4 is the new Vulkan Render with two Vulkan backends, Clustered and Mobile. The new Vulkan Render allows for real-time lighting in Godot using two new lighting systems. First, for small and medium scale environments, the old GI probe has been replaced by the new Voxel GI node. For large open worlds, Godot is getting Signed Distant Field Global Illumination, or SDFGI. This is a novel technique created and implemented by Juan, Godot's lead developer. It works in real time. Rendering contributor Clay John added screen space indirect lighting to add that extra bit of polish to your scenes. This feature is intended to complement Voxel GI or SDFGI. It adds more lighting detail to the scene using screen space sampling. This is similar to screen space ambient occlusion, which is a common graphics settings you'll find in many high budget 3D games. Do note that just like SSAO, this feature is quite heavy on the GPU. And if your game doesn't need real time lighting, you'll be pleased to know that light maps are now baked using the GPU. This should speed up the development process significantly. LearnGodot.com is offering its first course, Learn Programming in the Godot Engine. In this course, you will learn the fundamentals of programming and game development using the Godot Engine. You don't need any programming experience to take this course. Everything will be taught as you go. Use coupon code KAIJU to receive 10% off your first order. Godot 4 is also getting volumetric fog. Realism and performance are balanced thanks to temporal reprojection. You can configure the effect globally or define specific areas with fog volume nodes. For even more artistic polish, Godot 4 is getting decals. Decals are how things like bullet holes and impacts are done in real time. It also empowers artists to add detail and polish to a level's visuals. GPU-based particles are also getting amazing improvements. They now come with support for attractors, collisions, trails, sub-emitters, and manual emission. And Yuri, Godot's shader maintainer, poured a lot of love into making the Godot shading language and visual shaders more accessible and versatile. We're also getting several new optimization techniques. The number one most requested one being occlusion calling. Occlusion calling disables the rendering of objects when they are not currently seen by the camera. This feature alone makes large open world games possible in Godot. For fine tuning performance in 3D scenes, Godot 4 is bringing manual hierarchical level of detail or HLOD using visibility ranges. This will allow you to put multiple versions of a mesh into one mesh object that will be switched at predefined distances from the camera. This is a classic old school optimization technique, but it gets better than that as Godot 4 also brings automatic mesh level of detail or auto -lod. Godot 4 will automatically simplify meshes as they get further away from the camera. This should greatly reduce rendering costs without any extra work needed by the developer. Godot 4 also supports multiple windows in one application. This is another feature that makes Godot an appealing choice for desktop application use. Another small but hugely welcome change is that importing assets will now get a dedicated import dialog. This will allow you to preview and customize every part of the imported scene. You can also import GLTF files at runtime, allowing for more modular projects as well as tools made with the engine. The next thing we need to talk about is physics. For years, Godot has used the Bullet Physics Engine, and actually many games use the Bullet Engine. Next time you launch a major 3D game, read the opening credits and logos. You might see the Bullet Engine in there. Anyway, the Bullet Engine will no longer be the default physics solution in Godot 4. Godot 4 will use their own in-house solution known as Godot Physics. The team felt that writing their own solution would make it easier to fix issues and more flexibility when adding new physics features. 
The first step in the process was to make Godot physics on par with Bullet feature-wise, while also seeing if it was possible to improve performance and precision along the way. Various physics issues causing jitters and imprecise computations were fixed by Camille, Longelli, and Fabrice. Godot physics also adds two new collision shapes, cylinder and height map, and soft body nodes were added as well. Godot should be able to handle more physics objects in a scene thanks to broad phase optimization and multi-threading support. The physics nodes themselves were also overhauled. Many properties previously specific to certain nodes are now shared among all physics bodies nodes. There is also a new node called the character body node that replaces the old kinematic body. One of the features I'm most excited for is the navigation system. The new navigation servers support fully dynamic environments and on-the-fly navigation mesh baking. You can stream regions, which makes the system applicable to large open spaces. Physics bodies can be marked as obstacles for automatic collision avoidance, and it all works much faster than before thanks to multi-threading support. GDScript is improving dramatically as well. GDScript now features first-class functions, lambdas, new property syntax, the await and super keywords, and typed arrays. New built-in annotations make the language clearer and improve syntax for exported properties. And to top it off, your scripts can now automatically generate documentation that can be studied with the built-in help and the inspector doc tooltips. Despite all these additional features, GDScript actually runs faster than before, and this is thanks to George's work on the language backend. GD Native, Godot's C++ API layer, has been replaced with GD Extension. This should allow devs to write C++ add-ons and plugins for Godot without needing to recompile the entire engine. There are also some much welcome improvements to the text and font system coming to Godot 4 thanks to contributor Pavels. Godot's text rendering systems have been completely refactored into the new text server. Text server now makes Godot compatible with right-to-left languages like Arabic or Hebrew. Fonts now have proper multi-level fallback logic, and the size of a font is no longer tied to the font itself. Thank you. The audio system in Godot has been improved as well. Contributor Ellen Poe refactored a lot of the audio processing logic and centralized it into the audio server. This should fix various popping issues, race conditions, and overall poor resampling behavior, as well as pave the road for future improvements and features. Godot 4 will also handle multiplayer much more elegantly. All the core networking systems have been improved and made more reliable. We're talking DNS, HTTP, TCP, UDP, Enet, and WebSockets. Tons of bugs were fixed. DNS now resolves multiple IP addresses correctly, and large downloads should now work as they should. Godot 4 also comes with a fully working headless mode, which means no CPU cycles will be wasted calculating rendering or visual output. This is ideal for use cases such as multiplayer server hosting. Godot now supports mesh or peer-to-peer -peer networking as well. Another major feature is multiplayer replication. Godot will automatically synchronize scenes across clients. This includes spawning new nodes and syncing properties over the network. You don't have to worry about manually keeping your scenes in sync across connected devices, even for players connecting mid-game. Long gone are boilerplate functions and remote calls just to change some properties for every player in the session. There's actually a ton more features coming to Godot 4 that I've covered in previous videos. Like I said earlier, it's been in development for over two years. If you're interested in more Godot content, check out this video. If you've watched this far, you'll probably like this one as well.